Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to Idea Generation. Uh, today, we're going to do a bit more talk on penciling. We're going to do a little bit of talking about lettering. I'll show a couple of uh, video clips uh, of penciling in progress. And uh, I'd also like to mention that we have Aaron videotaping this session today. And as mentioned, that is for me to review and to do a critical reflection of my teaching methods to make sure I don't say um or uh too much. <laughs> so I'd like to begin by talking about penciling. Penciling part two. And we're going from the breakdown to the page. We've mentioned this before, that the breakdown is generally a smaller, rougher, and sketchier version of the finished comic. So you must now enlarge the work before drawing. Now last week we talked uh, about proportional enlarging. Do you remember that we did that last week? And we looked at how do you enlarge an A4 sheet to an A3 sheet. So everything fits together in these European um, scales of page size. They all proportionately fit into each other. And as we discussed last week, a way of proportionately figuring out how to do an enlargement, if you're going from A4 by drawing a straight line from the bottom corner to the top corner to the top corner of your A3, you can see that that is how we proportionately enlarge our drawings. <coughs> so once your breakdowns have been enlarged, once you've taken your, break, your A4 breakdown, enlarged it on the photocopy machine, um, you're going to get an A3 sized version of your breakdowns. And once your breakdowns have been enlarged, you can use a light box or a window to trace onto your Bristol board. Now last week I had Sheku uh, go into the, into the other room and, and transfer your pencils or your breakdowns onto the Bristol board by using the big window. What was your, uh, r how did you feel about that? Yeah. It's, really, yeah, it's, really nice. it's a nice setup, right? Um, and that's, so I've moved here from Canada. I, I couldn't bring my big light animation table with me, so when I'm drawing comics at home, I, I use a window. I use the uh, sliding glass doors, and you can set up a chair in front of it, and it, the sunlight acts as a great light box uh, against the window. Once you've got the whole page worked out, as we see in this example by Jack Kirby, these are his breakdowns. Once you've got those breakdowns roughed in, in a very sort of geometric, sketchy way, then you work inside each of the panels, one after the other, uh, in order to give them all the attention they deserve. The example that I showed last week, the penciler didn't necessarily work one after the other. So once you start to get used to penciling in, in a professional mode, you might find that it's, it's more interesting to, to move around the page a bit. Once you've got everything blocked out, you might want to move around uh, uh, you know, here and there. Um, but once we get into the inks and the colors, it's pretty much following everything that was indicated in the breakdown. So the breakdown, as we've said before, is a very, very important step. And it's one where you need to make sure that your story is, is quite solid and that you're quite confident that what you've got on the page is essentially what you're going to be transferring into your pencils. Are there any questions about transferring your breakdowns to the Bristol board at this point? Okay. Take your time with the lettering too. So that works, that's pretty good. So you might want to spend a bit more time on the lettering. Try it again, and this time print through it quite delicately. Yes, but take a bit more time. Don't rush through your lettering. Slow down a bit. And then try and make everything fit into a rectangular shape. Looks good, yeah. Nice, so yeah, this looks good, but then you want to kind of, this could probably fit on three or four lines instead of having a longer one like that. Mm-hmm, okay. Hmm. 
Mm -hmm. That's good. How's that, Emily? Can I see? Oh, that's just like me. Oh. <laughs> and he doesn't say anything. I drew a character that didn't speak, so that's like... Oh, okay. I think I said at the outset, choose a character that speaks, or at le yeah. least can we maybe... I didn't realize when I drew it, and then I realized because I didn't read ahead. <laughs> <laughs> can, can we make it that the character is thinking something, maybe? Oh, yeah, yeah. It could be a thought balloon. So go ahead. Yeah. So we don't want to have like one word hanging like that. Yeah, that's what I mean. I so balance like, it. Try to get it into like one clustered everything. Like. One clustered rectangle. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> right, so we don't want to have one word hanging like that. We want to have everything sort of fitting within, instead of it having this type of a shape, you want to have it more like this kind of a shape where everything fits in. All right. So try and move things around a bit and adjust it. How so? <laughs> I think I had it right here, and then I <laughs> I messed up like around this spot, I guess. Uh, I see. Right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, here you had it. That's 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 good too, though. I think this works well as well. So wait, which one are you copying? I spent two hours on my hair this morning. My hair this morning. You wouldn't believe it, right? It's okay. because I okay. thought when it came to on, I would thought I was going too close to the character, so I put it on a new line. Ah, uh, right. It, yeah. Well, you, so I would erase this part, put the on, or at least maybe shift this over a bit. So what you're trying to do is you're... <coughs> You're essentially creating a block of text uh, whereby no line is, is longer than the other, right? Now, there are exceptions. Sometimes you might have a couple of words that are floating at the bottom, but when you're constructing your, your speech balloons and doing your lettering, you want to try and keep things in a very sort of nice, tidy box shape. Now, what I'd like you to do is um, use a ruler and a pencil to create lines into which you place your letters. So I'd like you to do this on a separate sheet of paper away from your character, just as practice. So if you're not quite sure what to do, um, this, might, this is a good way of approaching it. So at the top of your page, measure down, right at the top of the page, measure down, let's say, two centimeters on either end. I'm just going to make an initial straight line this way. So I just measured two centimeters down from the top of the page, and now I'm going to draw a line across here. These lines are guidelines for your lettering, and you want to make them very, very light. I'm pressing a little bit hard with this one, so sometimes it's good to use like an H pencil or a 2H pencil. You're just drawing these guidelines very lightly. So once you've got this top line, I'm going to measure four centimeters down. With one centimeter space. So I've got four centimeters down and then a one centimeter space. I'm going to do the same thing across here. Four centimeters down and a one centimeter space. Now I'm going to connect these dots. I'm going to do the same thing again. I want you to do your lettering inside of these guidelines. You might need more than two lines, so you might need to add a third and a fourth line, but I would now like you to um, you know, fit your lettering into that rectangular shape that you did your, your block in, and I'd like you to fit it inside here now. So now you're using guidelines to help keep the lettering uh, straighter and more uniform. So yeah, you'll be going in increments of four centimeters and then a one centimeter space and then four centimeters, one centimeter space. So are you helping uh, Emily out there? Did I say centimeters? I meant millimeters. Yeah, millimeters, oh, sorry. That's like really big. <laughs> no, no, that would be very big. I'm sorry. 
Was it? So I would normally say inches, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> even bigger. <laughs> bigger, bigger is even bit. Yeah, that's even bigger. Uh, no, so millimeters. So four millimeters, one millimeter. Four millimeters, one millimeter. <laughs> and you want to make these guidelines very light. So when you're actually penciling on your your comic on the Bristol board on the good page, uh, use these guidelines. Uh, draw these guidelines with a very, very uh, hard pencil without pressing too hard into the paper so it doesn't sort of uh, create grooves into it. You're going to be using a very light touch for these guidelines. Mm -hmm. so nice solid lettering. Yeah, so once you've finished fitting it inside the block. So can I see the one you did before? Okay, great, yeah. So this fits nicely like that. Yeah, so follow exactly what you've got there in terms of the layout. How'd it go, Shiku? Uh, I just got up to I'm not sure. Can you explain? Yeah, no, that's good. So now you're going to letter inside here mm -hmm. and inside here. You're going to fit this into here. So you've got three lines. You just need to do one more line under here, uh, four centimeters and then one centimeter. Okay. And then you'll fit it into there. And then and when you what do we do after that? Draw it next to your character. Okay. Then. Yeah. Thanks. Fairly straight. So we do have a, a lettering guide as well, um, which I showed you guys last semester. Now this is a way of doing it without a lettering guide. Not everyone has access to a lettering guide, but this is one way of making sure that your lettering is, is straight and, and clear. And that looks good. Um, uh, so your spacing is slightly off, though. Um, spend a bit more time on the shape of your letters. So, you know, this D could almost be interpreted as an A. Yeah. But make it very, very clear. Okay. So spend very, very detailed time on each letter. That's great. So this is quite a transition from these two. Like, this, this is looking more like professional. Um, cartoon lettering, yeah. <coughs> once, you've, once you've drawn guidelines next to your character and you've written in that block of text, uh, I want you to ink over the lettering and then erase the pencils. But wait until the ink has dried for sure. So you're going to uh, make sure you do your lettering in pencil, right? So if, if you make any spelling mistakes, then you can easily correct them just by erasing. So write everything in pencil, double check that you've written everything correctly, and once you've determined that everything is spelt correctly and it's written properly, uh, then trace over with black ink. So I'm just going to hand out some felt pens uh, in case you don't have any. And then I'd like you to trace over your lettering. Does anybody have any questions about anything so far? Going around, it looks to me like everyone's pretty much got it. You understand that by drawing these lines, it's going to help you create lettering that's consistent and clear. Uh, taking the time to actually form the letters slowly. So don't rush through your lettering. Um, you know, y you want to go through each letter fairly clearly and consistently so that the reader can, can discern exactly what those letters are and what those words are saying. <coughs>